What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. Now if you're new here, please think about subscribing and if these videos are helpful to you, please think about giving them a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot and it may help other people find these videos too. Now, we're on to this table saw again. This is the Kitty 1619 table saw. It's one I bought second hand. I've done a video all about it already. Um, I'll leave a link up here somewhere or a card. Go check that out. Um, in this video, I'm going to do a full table saw setup and we're also going to replace some of the parts on this table saw. So uh, you might find it interesting. I found a website where you can get replacement parts for the Kitty machines. I'll leave a link in the description for that below. And um, the main issue I have with it is this crosscut carriage. It's a bit rough. It's not running smooth. Now I've replaced the bearings on it already, but I couldn't get the rollers. So I had to replace the bearings inside in the roller. So I had to split off the nylon roller, put them back on, tape them up. It's made it a bit smoother, but it's not perfect. Now the rollers themselves, I also found on that website, the replacement ones, but they're 26 euros a piece. And I'm not paying 26 euros a piece for nylon rollers when you can get them online for a couple of euros. So I've got an alternative from Amazon. Again, I'll link that in the description below. If you're thinking about buying one of these machines, this particular crosscut carriage is also on the Kitty spindle sander. So it's the same crosscut carriage that's on most of the Kitty machines. So again, if you're thinking about buying one of those machines, this video will be helpful to you. For everybody else, if you're thinking about buying a second-hand table saw, this video will also be helpful to you. So we'll go through a full setup and show you how to tune your table saw as well. So yeah, let's get on with the show. Okay, we have the cross cut slid off the carriage now and it's on the table here. Um, like I say, I've replaced most of the bearings already. The bearings on it are just standard bearings, so there's two types. We have 6200s and we have 6202s. Now again, most bearings will just have numbers on them. Most bearings, unless they're um, an odd size, will just be off the shelf items. You'll get them in most engineering shops or you'll get them online. All you need to do is just get the number of the bearing and you can order the part. Like I say, nine times out of 10, it'll just be a standard bearing and off the shelf item. Now the particular rollers had 6,200 uh, bearings inside in them, but it's not, it's a manufactured item with a particular size nylon wheel around it, which is not available off the shelf. So those things you will have to search online. Now I've found an alternative form, which we have here. Let's get the camera to focus on that, there you go. So this is one I found on Amazon. These were 14 euros for four, which is a, a big difference between 26 euros for one. Now, they're 40 mil outside, a 10 mil diameter hole in the center, which is exactly the same as the rollers that are on this particular sled. However, they are thicker across this way. So I might have to do some foiling on some of the parts just to get them to fit, but uh, hopefully they should be good. Now, the sled itself is a pretty heavy bit of kit. So um, yeah, I'm not sure how smooth we can get to run, but I just needed to run f a lot freer than it is at the minute, just to make it easier. I reckon it's somewhere in the region of 25 kilos, so it's a, uh, it's a pretty substantial bit of cast um, iron top on this thing, you know? So these machines were well built. The older machines um, generally were a lot better built than the newer machines. So uh, yeah, it's worth having a look at these old machines, especially now that I found a place to get the parts for them. So yeah, let's uh, get you in for a closer look now. I'll whip off the old rollers and we'll put on the new rollers and we'll see, hopefully this will work. Right, here's a close-up of the sled itself, and um, we have five bearings on it, so one, two, three, four, five, and we have four rollers. One roller here, another one here, and then we have two in here and here. Now these rollers were just, um, again, standard bearings, 6,200 bearings with a nylon, black, black nylon wheel around them, something similar to these ones, but the nylon was just chewed to pieces, so, um, and the bearings were shot. So what I done was, um, I just split the nylon, took the bearing out, put in a new bearing and just taped them up. So um, they're running a lot freer, but they're not great. So it was kind of a bodge job, a temporary fix because I couldn't find the parts. Um, it's running smoother, but it's not running as smooth as I like it. So what we're gonna do is we wanna whip these off now. So we'll be replacing these two and these two. So yeah, it's just a case of whip them out. Now, 
we have these kind of guide runners that sit over the rollers here. They have a certain width to them. These wheels aren't going to fit, so we're probably going to have to file these out. But what I'll do is I'll get the four um, wheels on first, and then we can pop these on afterwards. We'll check if it's running, and then we'll uh, pop these back on afterwards. It's, it's very simple to get this cross-cut carriage on and off the, or the sled off the carriage. So uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay guys, we've got the rollers off there now. These are the particular offending articles that I was telling you about. So it's just a standard bearing with a nylon, a wheel around the outside, and these things were chewed to pieces. Um, so you can see I split them, popped out the old bearings, put in the new bearings, and just taped them up, and they were still a little bit rough. So I'm hopeful that replacing these with these should uh, solve some of the problems at least. So we're gonna get the shafts out of these now into these and uh, put it all back together. It's pretty simple. Okay, one quick thing, and that's the two rollers that go up underneath here. So we're replacing these rollers with these rollers. Now, as you can see, these rollers are slightly thicker with the nylon. So we're gonna to have to pack that up with some washers. The original ones had two washers on them. We're just gonna to have to put an extra one just to keep the nylon from rubbing against the plate here. So that'll sit up underneath here like that and the screw or the bolt will go down through it. So uh, yeah, so that's just one little thing. We just have to pack this out because they're slightly thicker, that's all. So uh, it's fairly straightforward. So. You can just about see the two of them. We've one in here, one in here. They sit on the opposite side of the cross carriage to this roller here. So uh, they're able to spin freely enough there now, which is good. 
So now let's take this back to the carriage and see if it rolls. Bingo. That is absolutely beautiful. We have a little bit right there that we need to adjust, so we'll find out what that is. But, uh, oh, that's like night and day. That is infinitely better. Look how smooth that is. The barest touch. You really have to shove it before. So there you go, guys. Um, Kitty 1619. Rollers from Amazon, nice and cheap. Again, this cross-cut carriage and sled is available on a bunch of kitty machines. So if you own one and you're having these kind of problems, there's a solution. Again, links in the description below to where I got all this stuff. So uh, yeah, happy days, happy days. Okay guys, the little bump we were having was just this bearing here. There's two adjustment bearings. So there's one on the bottom here and there's one on the top on the opposite side. Now, both of these bearings have an offset screw in the center of their shaft. So as you rotate this guy around, it will bring the bearing out or closer to the, to the rail. So it's just to pin um, the bearing against the rail, both top and bottom. So that was just slightly out. So again, it's, it's a 19 spanner, just to rotate that around, just to bring that bearing in against the, in against the rail. And as you can see now, we are smooth as butter. Right. So I need to take this back off again now. I have some filing to do on the little guide rails and uh, I'll show you these bearings when we have it back on the bench. Okay guys, there's our two bearings, this guy and this guy. As you can see, the shaft has an off center hole. So as you rotate this around, it will actually move the bearing in or out. And that's how you adjust um, how tight you hold this thing onto your carriage. So you have one on the top on the opposite side and one on the bottom on the opposite side of this guy. So it's just rotate this guy around until both these bearings are touching your carriage and that's just the adjustment on it. So it's nice and simple. Okay, so the final thing we have to adjust is just these guides. They just have a, a foam pad that sits on top of your uh, carriage. So it just cleans the carriageway as it goes along. They just sit down over the nylon wheels like this. But as you can see, these ones are slightly wider. So we just have to file a small bit out of this to get them to sit. So that's the only adjustment you will have to make if you put on these rollers. Small bit of foil in there. So uh, we'll do that now and we'll get these back on, get this carriage back on and it should be 100%. God, this thing is heavy. As a great man once said, I love it when a plan comes together. is a thing of beauty. Right guys, now that we have our cross-cut carriage 
running sweetly and all sorted out, I'm going to take you through a quick table saw setup. So just something for you guys to look out for. What we'll need for this is just a combination square, an engineer square preferably if you have one. Um, these things are fantastic, these level boxes. I highly recommend that if you're getting into woodworking and you're working with machines, get yourself one of these. They're a great little tool and they're so easy to use. And then all we need is some sort of paste wax um, just to do the deck. You can buy machine wax. So uh, yeah, that's all you need, just to rub it down and ensure that everything glides over it perfectly. So what we're gonna check for is ensure that our blade is exactly at 90 degrees. Um, to do, check it again at 45 degrees, it's the exact same procedure. And then we're just gonna check, make sure that we are exactly parallel with our guide rails. So that's all we need to do to check our blade. And uh, yeah, hopefully everything will be okay on this machine. I've put a new blade in it. I've already set it up. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that now. Let's get on with it. Okay guys, the first thing we're gonna check is, is our blade exactly at 90 degrees? Now there's two stops, mechanical stops, inside of nearly all table saws. There'll be one for 90 degrees and one for 45 degrees. They're essentially just a bolt with a nut on them. As soon as you get this to exactly 90 degrees, set your 90 degree stop. And as soon as you get it exactly at 45 degrees, then you can set your 45 degree stop. So I'll just do 90 now because the process for 45 is exactly the same. So we're gonna take our engineer square and ensuring that our insert is exactly flush with our deck. We can do this test. So we're just gonna take our engineer square and we wanna put it against the side of the blade, not against the tooth. Make sure that you're against the side of the blade. And as you can see, that is exactly at 90 degrees there, which is perfect. So we, I've set my 90 degree stop now to uh, exactly 90 degrees. So we know we're good. Another good way of checking this is just these level boxes. If you can see that there, switch it on. So we just let it settle. Okay, now we're gonna zero this to our deck. So we're at zero degrees. I can take this guy then, put him on the side, and he is reading 89.7 degrees there, if you can see that. Let me make that a bit brighter. There we go. So 89.7 degrees, so 0.3 of a degree. I'm not gonna argue with that too much. So that's happy days. Next thing we wanna do is ensure that our blade runs exactly parallel with our guide rails. So if the blade is slightly askew, you might be cutting more with the back than with the front. So you'll have your initial cut will be with the front of the blade. And if the blade is askew, it'll then take a small bit more off your cut as you're exiting the back of the blade. So we don't want that for accurate cuts. So this is very simple. We're gonna take our combination square. We're gonna put our combination square to the edge of our guide rail. So we pick a tooth. So say we go with this tooth right here. Put your combination square tight to your tooth rotate it to the back and just perform the same test again and i have no gap front or back so it's exactly the same so if you have a gap you will have to adjust your blade either this way or this way now most table saws you adjust the deck so it's just remove the four bolts loosen them and just tap your deck slightly so that everything comes perfectly parallel on this particular table saw it's a bit of a nightmare because the whole motor housing and mechanism is bolted to the deck. So we have, let me see, if we can get this. So we have these two bolts here and we have two bolts in the back. We have a mechanism, the whole mechanism hinges here and in the front. So you have to loosen the two of these. Um, I have to take a punch and a hammer and tap to get that um, kink out of the blade. So uh, it's a little bit, it's, it's not really adjustable on these kitty machines, which is a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a downer, but I did manage to get it to kick slightly so that I'm perfectly parallel with my guide rails. So just bear that in mind with kitty machines. Most other table saws, it's only a case of moving the deck in relation to your blade. So that's pretty straightforward there. So again, the process for, 90, for 45 degrees is exactly the same. You can just take your combination square, move your blade to 45 degrees, and you can just check it with your combination square. So the same as we do with 90 degrees. So we know our blade now is at exactly at 90 and it runs perfectly parallel to our guide rails. Okay, so that's, that's basically most of the setup done. Now it's just a case of you just service your machine and we'll uh, paste wax the deck, the deck. Okay, another adjustment we need to do then is our fence. So we can check how square or how parallel our fence is with our blade. We know that we've 
we've um, adjusted our blade to our guide rail so we know we're perfectly parallel there. So now you just want to make sure that your fence, when you lock it down, stays perfectly parallel with your guide rails again. Now, different fences will have different adjustments on them. This particular fence, it doesn't, you, you clamp it front and back. So what I found the best thing to do is get it perfect, clamp the back, and then lock it down in the front and it stays perfectly parallel. So clamp the back using this guy. I need to get a new handle for this. It's another job I have to do in this machine. So clamp the back and then lock it down. Again, different table saws will have different type fences. So you just wanna make sure that when you lock down your fence, it doesn't kick. If it kicks a slight bit at the back, it's not catastrophic as long as it's not too much because you will be essentially guiding your piece off the front of the fence anyway. If it kicks in, that can be a major problem because you can pinch it against the blade and then you can get kicked back, which is very dangerous. So if it cans out just the tiniest bit at the back, I wouldn't be overly concerned. You can just check, run a couple of test cuts, make sure that they're 90 degrees and uh, you should be good. Make sure though that it's not canting in the way. You will have to address that if that is the case because uh, yeah, kickback can literally be a pain in the balls if you get hit in the nuts, right? Or worse, you could lose an eye, break a nose, or you know, it could be catastrophic. So just pay attention to that guys, all right? Now, let's, uh, we'll wax a deck and uh, just to ensure that everything glides over it nicely. Okay, just waxing the deck. All you need is some form of paste wax, or like I say, there is actual machine wax available online that you can buy. I just have some beeswax here, it does the same thing. Again, it's just, we're just gonna wipe down our deck or all our surfaces with some wax. Get a cloth, get it on there. Again, it's just fairly straightforward. There's not too much explanation required here. Just every, every time you're checking and setting up your machine, just give it a good wax. It'll help stop the deck from rusting if you have a cast iron top. This one is a cast aluminum top, but uh, again, the wax will help just the timber slide nicely. So we just wanna do all our surfaces. There we go. It is literally that simple. Just as a little test, you can take a piece of timber and just, you know, it's just some nice lubrication to ensure that everything slides nicely across your table saw. And you can also use it on your bandsaw and any other thing with a deck, so um, your planar thicknessers, your spindle molars, it's always handy to have a bit of paste wax or machine wax in the shop. So yeah, there we go, we're more or less set up now. I'll just take you through the saw blades. All right guys, just a quick note on different types of saw blades for your table saw. This particular machine uses a 250 millimeter blade. Um, so what you have to look out for then is what kind of cutting are you doing mostly? What kind of blades do you use? It's handy to have three different types of blades. So you'll have like a 40 tooth, a 60 tooth, and an 80 tooth. So your 60 tooth is like your all rounder. It's your general purpose blade. Again, this machine is unplugged from the wall, so don't worry. Um, so yeah, so you'll have smaller gullets. It can do rips and cross cuts, but if you're doing a lot of rip cuts, um, long boards, you would want to put in a 40 tooth with larger gullets just so we can clear the material quicker. Um, these can clog if you're doing a lot of rip cuts. If you're doing fine work or finishing work, if these are your finished cuts you want to make, then you would want something with an, like an 80 tooth. So this is a, a fine cut saw blade. Um, again, just for finishing work. Yeah, there's not really much more to it than that. You have your rip saw blade, your fine finish blade, and your general purpose all around 60 tooth blade. And you can see um, yeah, whatever your saw is, get the right size, ensure you have the right diameter hole in the center. If it has a brake system, you can get ones with two holes either side of the center that the clamp actually goes through. So just check that, make sure it's the correct saw blade for your saw and uh, it helps to have an option for all your different types of cuts. So yeah, rip saw, general purpose and a fine finish saw blade. Yeah, that's fairly straightforward. Right guys, there we go. That's my Kitty 1619 table saw, my second hand, fairly beat up and abused table saw, which is now running sweet as a nut. So um, 
Yeah, if you're thinking about buying a second-hand table saw, just do a bit of research online. Make sure it's the saw for you. Make sure that you can get parts for that particular saw. I didn't do that before I bought this. I kind of just went out and bought it, and uh, I had to do the research afterwards. But luckily enough, I was able to find solutions online for this particular machine. So if any of you guys are looking at a Kitty 1619, parts are still available for it. The rollers from Amazon work perfectly, as you can see. That crosscut carriage is sweet as a nut, so again, like I said already in the video, that cross-cut carriage is on a few different kitty machines, so it's on their spindle sander as well, I believe. And uh, yeah, that's it. So this content has been interesting. Please, again, hit like and hit subscribe. There will be more of this kind of stuff. If you have any questions, any comments, just leave them below. I will get back to you. Anything you think I should be doing or that I haven't said, just let me know and I'll address that. If you wanted me to do an in-depth review of this particular saw, I can do that as well, just as soon as I've got a couple of weeks work under it and uh, I, I get to understand the ins and outs of it myself. I can do that video if that's something that interests you. So yeah, there you go. Uh, fairly beat up table saw, now running sweet as a nut. So it, there is options available for you out there if you're on a budget. So long as you're willing to put the work in, um, you can get a really nice table saw. Yeah, I've been John McGrath. This has been my YouTube channel. So uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, guys.